All right, so I wrote uh, some of the terms down over here, okay? So just to quickly recap, this point over here that we started in when the slip ratio was pretty low, that was my no load, okay? And we said that the reason why it's called no load is, is if you did not put any load on your motor and you gave it uh, the voltage, whatever it's rated at, it's going to spin pretty much as close as possible to the synchronous speed, okay? And and that's why that's what happens when you put no load on the torque. So that's why it's called no load, okay? We also said this pull out torque over here, that's the peak. And it's just it's just called that. I'm not sure why it's called pull out torque, but it's just that's just what it is. Okay, so that's the that's the peak of this torque speed curve. Whatever the peak is gonna be, that's what you call the pull out torque. All right. And the pull out torque is an is an important term because it helps describe what torque your motor is capable of giving. Okay. And actually we're gonna realize that by changing the position horizontally of this pull-out torque that makes a huge difference in the behavior and the application that our motor does, okay? So just remember this term, pull-out torque, okay? It's very important, all right? And the final thing is this starting torque, okay? Uh, and so that's whatever the, st the torque is when your speed is zero. So if you excited the voltage, if you excited your uh, uh, motor with voltage and you kind of held its shaft steady, okay? The maximum that the torque will be at that point, that's the starting torque. All right, and you can see why this term would be important. If your motor was, um, you know, supposed to turn a load, and this load required a torque higher than its maximum starting torque, then your motor would not spin. Okay, and then a whole other pro a whole other set of problems would happen. If your motor is stalled and it's trying to turn, then that means there's a whole lot of current, and that current is going to cause heating. And if your motor overheats, that could cause problems with the with the windings, and then the windings could break down, and and so on and so forth. Okay. So anyway, so that's a pretty important thing to know as well. The starting torque. Okay. The last thing I didn't talk about is this full load. Okay. This is the full load torque somewhere over here. Now, I think this is kind of a misnomer. It's a little bit annoying to me that it's called full load uh, because we usually say loading as how much torque is required. And so going down this way, this is the this is the direction of increasing load, okay? Increasing load, increasing slip ratio, increasing everything is pretty much this way, all right? Um, however, the reason why this point over here is called full load is because that's where you usually like to operate. The motor usually operates in this region, okay? So maybe it should be called rated load, okay, over here rather than full load. But anyways, we usually like to refer, we usually use the term rated and full load synonymous, synonymously in, in power systems and, and what have you. So that's why this is called full load. But don't mistake this for what is the maximum load your motor can take. That's what, no, that's not the case, okay? This is just the rated operating condition. That's where it's working at. This is the operating condition, okay? Now you might be wondering, why is the operating condition there? Why not work when the torque is highest, for example, you know, why not work there? Or maybe over here when I want the motor to spin really fast. Why is it that the full load is right there? Okay, the reason why is what is power? The mechanical power is, you know, this, the torque multiplied by the speed, okay? What you'll find is if you multiplied for each of these points, you multiplied their, you know, component values together, the the power curve is, is going to actually look something like this. It's going to go... I'm not going to draw on this uh, uh, right now, but it's going to go something like this. And the peak of the power curve is actually going to be a little after this peak. So the pullout torque is, at, uh, the even, even though the torque is at its max over here, the overall mechanical power is not yet at its max. It's a little afterwards. So if you go like this and you peaked over there, the peak of that power curve, that's aligning with where you want to operate. Because you want to operate where you're getting maximum power out of your motor for a given voltage. And that makes a complete sense to me. So that's why this is called the full load because that's when your maximum power is, okay? So if I were to draw the power curve with respect to uh, uh, speed, it looks something like this and then go peak right at that value of full load and then go back down to zero because, you know, this is zero here. So zero times anything is zero. So anyways, so just... Um, uh, that, that was just a quick brief discussion on, you know, the intuition behind a curve. When you look at a curve, these regions should show up to you. The reasoning why should show up to you. And these particular points, these very important points, no load, full load, pull out and start and torque. These are the points you should really, you know, know um, as soon as you see a torque speed characteristic curve. Okay. Next up, we're going to see what happens. How can we change or like what do different curves look like for different motors? I just showed you one induction motor and a pretty classic example, but actually you'll see that there's a wide variety of different curves that induction motors can have. Okay. So I'll see you in a second.